Well, Francis uh, Emmanuel Macron making his way to the United States right now. President Trump seemingly making progress on trade and North Korea. So why is the mainstream media ignoring or twisting these accomplishments to New York City Council and Minority Whip Republican Joe Varelli, Fox News contributor Kat Temp, and Independent Women's Forum Nan Haywood. Kat, let me start with you. It's, you know, I just, I mean, listen, we understand the media doesn't like President Trump, but I just think that that their dislike form has clouded any sort of an, uh, reporting. Good news is just never simply good news. Or it's just not covered. I remember when the North Korean news broke on Friday, I switched to MSNBC for a minute, and they were talking about James Comey. It's like, this is kind of a big deal, talking about stopping these missile tests. I know you don't like President Trump, but this is great news for the country, and the fact that it's great news for the country should mean more to you than your problems with President Trump, and you really should be covering that and be able to get over it and be happy when he does good things. Even if you don't like him, him it doing good the things American public. is good for the, the world. For American people and for the world. <laughs> and, you know, Nana, and I, I, I see the same thing. And then what I find is that when after ignoring it, they find a negative spin. So right. before the weekend was over, MSNBC, the spin on this was that Kim Jong Un is a brilliant negotiator. <laughs> 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 Right. He's getting everything that he wants. I'm like, huh? huh? No, I, I think they, they cannot stand. They have so much invested, Charles, in denigrating President Trump, in seeing him fail for all the reasons, because all their predictions, right, about his character, about his abilities, have been proven wrong. He has been a great leader for the country and the world in so many ways that we can all identify on the American economy, which is the number one tool, actually, that he has built to leverage, building up our military again, and now being forthright for our allies, for free people around the world. He is not capitulating. He's not deferring. That was President Obama's style. He is instead being right. forthright. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's difficult in this environment for some people to separate a person and, 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 and their animosity from them, from the, the professional obligations that come, for instance, with journalism. Right. Believe it or not, some journalists are biased. That we could confirm <laughs> over the past couple of weeks. The, the, the thing that probably drives the president the most crazy and, and something that he tweeted about is watching these pundits from past administrations who were themselves feckless at dealing with North Korea trying to lecture this White House on how to deal with North Korea. It's crazy. The smart people on TV have been saying that Trump is going to step on the banana peel every time he steps on the world stage. And that just has not happened one time yet. You know, I've seen uh, uh, things, and it's not just, of course, the media, you know, it's Hollywood and those types where the narrative, uh, Kat, is that Trump is, Trump is picking a fight with North Korea. You know, like, you know, like, leave that, leave little Kim alone. Like, you, why are you picking on this guy? Yeah, he's not a nice guy, everyone, <laughs> by the way. And I was someone, at first, when President Trump started talking really tough on North Korea, I was kind of like, whoa, I, I wasn't sure how to feel about it. And I understand that some people might have just seen it as something that's so different than what's been done in the past and it made them uncomfortable. But now that we're seeing for a fact that it is working, it's time to recognize that it is working. Right. It's time to give credit where credit's due. Right. And I think also, Nana, you brought this sure. up. The idea is, hey, you know what, maybe it's time to tear up some of the old rules uh, because... You know, they're not necessarily working for us. North Korea has, be has become nuclearized. They have the abilities. Uh, our, you know, our trade deficits are getting larger and larger. We're losing key industries in this country. There are certain things that are going wrong, and if you don't mix it up, you know, there's no such thing, as, in my mind, as settled science, whether it's economic science or social science. And, Charles, you've talked about it, and you've been very uh, persuasive about the uh, value, at the very least, as a negotiating point of, quite honestly, the tariff threat, which most of us, uh, I think, uh, have cringed at in a lot of ways. Right. Because, you know, as Macron says, President Macron, we don't want to have trade wars with our allies. No, we don't. But it's also true that China's mercantilism has put many American workers uh, at risk right. and in American industry at well, risk. Well, on that note, then, uh, Trump tweeting about the, uh, that he may tie border wall security and NAFTA together. Any deal with Mexico, he's saying, Joe, uh, is, is that the right tactic to take on this, particularly when it feels like we're close to some sort of major renegotiation on NAFTA? Is this going to be a hurdle that, sides, that, that, that sort of derails that? 
I don't know if it's a hurdle. I, I think for the majority of Trump's base, they like to hear about the, 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 the renegotiation of NAFTA and the border wall. Tying the two together, I think, only reinforces that. I, I think w what you have with, with this border wall is that you have a, a, a sort of a multi-dimensional success, whether it's on renegotiating NAFTA, whether it's on stopping drugs that are coming across the border. I think Trump is right to really, really, it's almost like this border wall has become a metaphor for some of the success of the Trump administration. Yeah, but by the same token, though, Kat, uh, Mexico is not going to I don't think they're going to do anything with respect to paying for the wall just yet, uh, you know, and, and it feels like we're close. Uh, by the way, we're looking now, uh, the French president, uh, that's uh, old footage of, of the wall right there, but that's uh, right there, uh, the plane for the president of France, Macron, he just landed. Uh, we'll continue to look at that in a moment, but back to you on this, Kat. I think we're very close. I really do on NAFTA. I, I think, uh, you know, Mexico has a, an amazing, booming economy. And you would wish that they would do something with the wall. The 29,000 murders there last year, mostly drug-related, the record number there. They've got an issue, too, with, this, with fentanyl coming across the border and things like that. Right, but what it comes down to really is how to pay for it. Mexico, I agree, doesn't look like Mexico is going to be paying for the wall anytime soon. And there's also a huge split in Congress when it comes to the wall. And I'm not just talking about Republican versus Democrat. I'm also talking about in the Republican Party. If you can't get all the Republican votes to fund the wall or to allow for funding for the wall, then it's not going to be able to happen. And right now, I don't see that happening. But we're finding evidence, Nan, that yeah. uh, prescriptions for, for opioids are dropping oh, yeah. considerably. And yet, overdose deaths are going up. So we know right. that there's a new source for it. Right. Uh, you know, it's not just people going to their doctors, not no. just rogue doctors or rogue drug companies. Right. And it's got to be coming across that border. Sure. It's creating havoc on both sides of it. It's creating death and mayhem. Absolutely. That's an economic issue. That's a social issue. It is. And the synthetic fentanyl is, uh, just as you, as you said, is uh, causing that uptick in deaths and it's a very dangerous uh, phenomenon to have uh, and I view the wall as when I say wall and I think a lot of us do it's not just a physical structure it is also all the technology and all the personnel and all the administrative mechanisms needed to assure that a sovereign border is a sovereign border it doesn't mean it can't be a friendly border Robert Frost said good fences make good neighbors and they do and if Mexico wants to have continued success economically they do have to deal with us uh, before I ask you I want to get back to you, Kat, because an interesting Quinnipiac poll in Texas showed uh, only 43 percent support for the wall. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that is about people just not, it's not NIMBY per se, but Texans pride themselves on owning that land. Right. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmingly, though, they want border security. They favor National Guards being there. So that gets back to Nan's point. There could be some combination that's acceptable to the American public to secure our southern border. Right. I'm not somebody who is a supporter of the physical wall necessarily. I think that it costs a lot of money and I'm not sure how much of a difference it would really make. And especially when you have people staying by ways by overstaying their visas and right. the, the, that sort of situation. But absolutely, border security is important to Americans. And I think that it should be put that way in terms of it's not just a wall. It is also having other support there. And I think that another thing that could help would be to end some of the welfare incentives that we have here for people who come welfare over here. That could stop the flow yeah. of oh, yeah. immigrants. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, a, a role. Um, that's a red carpet, guys. Thank you all very, very much.